In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace this front lower ball joint on this Chevy Silverado. Let's get into it. We're going to pull the wheel off, take the center cap off first, use a straight blade screwdriver. You might want to use a rag so you don't scratch anything. Just pop that off. Using a 22 millimeter socket, take the lug nuts off. the wheel off. I'm going to take this cap off. I'm using a chisel and just try to hammer it off. You can just go around to the sides. You can use a small pry bar as well if this doesn't work. I'm trying not to ruin it because we're going to reuse it. Pop it off. Using a 36 millimeter socket, take this nut off. Using a magnet, you can take the washer off. Now we're gonna take these two caliper bracket bolts out. We're gonna take the caliper and the bracket off together using an 18 millimeter socket. Watch out for the hose. And slide the whole bracket and caliper off. Now we're going to use a brake hanger, a caliper hanger, and hang the caliper out of the way. I'm going to take the rotor off, use a T30, take this screw out. Grab the rotor, slide it off. If it's stuck on there, you can just hammer in these locations. Slide it off. Now disconnect the wheel speed sensor. I'm just going to use a trim tool. Get underneath here, slide that up, and disconnect the connector. Just push down on the tab and slide it off. And this retainer right here, you can just use a screwdriver, open this up. Straight blade screwdriver. And then just move that aside. This part is going to stay with the knuckle. I'm going to take this upper ball joint nut off. There is a cotter pin, so I'll take the cotter pin off. Just using some pliers. Slide that out. Using an 18 millimeter wrench, loosen up the ball joint nut. Just using a ratchet wrench, a little bit quicker. Just leave a couple threads on there. Don't take it off completely. Now we're going to remove the outer tie rod end. I'll use a 21 millimeter socket. Take this nut off. You can use a front end tool to separate the tie rod or just use a hammer. Just give it a tap. Pops 
stretch right out. Set that aside. Now I'm going to twist the knuckle to the side and I want to separate the upper ball joint. So what I'm going to do is take the hammer, just give it a tap right here. I still have that lower nut on or nut on. There we go. That's separated. Using a 24 millimeter socket, loosen up this nut. I'm just going to leave this nut on a few threads and we can separate this ball joint. I'm using a pickle fork and we'll separate this ball joint, just slide it in place, hammer it in. There it is. Made it. Now take a pry bar and just pry down on the upper control arm and we can take the nut off and just very gently separate the knuckle. Raise that up. Now I'm just going to support the knuckle, take the lower nut off. need to slide the axle out at the same time. And the knuckle comes right off. I'm just going to use a bungee cord just take this out of the way, slide it to the side. Should be good right there. With the old ball joint, there is a couple areas where it's peened over. You can just take a chisel and a hammer and just tap those in. because we're going to push the ball joint straight through. You could always use a grinder and grind them off if you want to. That's good. going to use a wire brush and just clean up this area a little bit. It's pretty rusty. Now I'm going to take a ball joint press with the correct adapter. You want the base to be larger than the ball joint so it can press it into it. See, it's starting to press down. There we go, popped it out. Now we're going to take the new ball joint. You want to find a cup that just sits on the base of the ball joint so that it's going to push it up. And then you want a cup for the top that this part can go through. So we'll set that up like that. Take the ball joint press again. You want to make sure it's seated all the way around there. That looks good. We're going to put the snap ring on. You need some snap ring pliers. Get this lined up. Just slide that. Make sure it goes all the way around the groove. And that looks good. Now I can lower the CV joint. 
take that bungee cord off. Now take the knuckle and line it up. You gotta try to get the ball joint and the axle in at the same time. Get the nut started. Once the nut's on there, you can let go. Get this lined up. There we go. And the upper ball joint. And just pry down. Get that nut started as well. What I'm doing now is using a pull jack and just raising up on the knuckle just so there's some pressure on there so I can tighten that nut down without the stud spinning. If you need to, you can use a 24 millimeter wrench around the nut and then use a hex key. This is a eight millimeter hex key that's gonna prevent this from spinning and then you can tighten this with a wrench. Once you get this bottomed out, then you can just go back to using a socket. lower the pole jack, put it out of the way. Now I'm going to torque this nut to 92 foot-pounds. Now we're going to tighten the upper ball joint. Just use a ratchet wrench. And if this stud starts spinning, you can use a pry bar and just pry down on the upper control arm. And you want to tighten that up. If you have the ability to use a torque wrench and torque this, you want to torque that to 37 foot-pounds. Now get a cotter pin, if your vehicle has one, and put that in. This happens to be a reusable cotter pin. Lock that in place. Now get the tie rod. Position that in the knuckle. Take the nut, get that started. And just using a pry bar, I'm gonna pry down on the tie rod, snug this up. And torque this to 44 foot-pounds. Take the washer, the axle nut, get that started. Snug that down. Now I'm going to take a pry bar in between the studs to prevent the spindle from spinning. And we're going to tighten this nut down to 177 foot-pounds. Now I take this cap, line it up, and just tap it on. You can use a punch so you don't bend the center part. Just go around the edges. Now line the rotor up. Make sure you line that hole up with the threaded hole. Get the screw back in. and just snug it down. Not too tight. Now take the wiring harness for the wheel speed sensor, line that up, lock that in place, connect the connector. That's good. And then push down the retainer. Now take the caliper off the hanger. And slide it over the rotor. Take the two bolts. You can put some thread lock adhesive on the bolts 
and then get those started. Now I'm going to torque these bolts to 129 foot-pounds. Now I'll put the wheel up. Put the lug nuts on. Now I'm going to torque the lug nuts in a cross pattern to 140 foot-pounds. Now just go around again, double check. Now I take the center cap. There is a little picture of a valve stem. You want to line that up with the valve stem. Lock it down. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.